As always, we appreciate those of you who have joined us here and online. Um, I've got to tell you, today is our Pathfinder Sabbath. We're going to continue this Holy Spirit series entitled, Led by the Spirit. Led by the Spirit, Heavenly Things. Last week, we began discussing how the Holy Spirit works or is trying to work with you based on your personality. And you guys got to stop texting me. You see, you want the answer now. See that? They just want answers right now. I told you it was a two-part sermon. I was not going to give you all the answers right away. Today is part two of you are your worst enemy. Amen? Say amen. You are your worst enemy. Now, everybody got their charts? Yeah? You didn't didn't bring it? Anyway, I'm going to put it up in a minute. But for those of you who have your charts, you know, you you, you came last week um, and you asked me last week, Mario, what if you fall in more than two or three of those quadrants? I'm going to tell you why that is. Okay? Let's deal with that. If you have your charts and you look at your strengths and weaknesses in each quadrant and see where you fall, that's the strongest quadrant. Who here last week fell in the choleric quadrant? Raise your hand. All right. Who here fell in the melancholic quadrant? All right, all right. Who here fell in the sanguine quadrant? All right, praise the Lord. Any phlegmatics in the, in, the, in the, come on, just release it up. It's all good, you know? All right, now, high means that most strengths and weaknesses are in that quadrant. Amen? Now, if you had at least two quadrants that were equal in number, raise your hand. I did. All right? Now, if you had three quadrants that were equal in number, raise your hand. All right, we don't have those yet. Did anybody come up with four? <laughs> it is possible that, that we can have quads amongst us. All right? Now listen to me. I, 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 want, to, I want you to take that sheet and, and really keep it in your Bibles. All right? Because when you look at your high quadrant, all right, and you turn your eyes to the weaknesses or the negative side of your high quadrant, that negative side, not the positive side, that negative side of your higher quadrant, because that's what I want you to pay attention to today. Because during this sermon, Pathfinder, it is that negative side of your high quadrant that we are going to actually say to you that you really need to concentrate on. Because whatever that negative side of your high quadrant is, that is the part of you that is giving the Holy Spirit the most difficult time when it comes out. So please understand, nobody plays to the negative side all the time. Just like nobody plays to the positive side all the time. There are varying degrees of choleric. There are varying degrees of melancholic. There are varying degrees of sanguine. There are varying degrees of phlegmatic. But please understand that there is no quadrant that is bad. And there is no quadrant that is extra good. So whatever your quadrant lead is. It is a gift from God. Your challenge is learning by the grace of God to use the positive side through the influence of the Holy Spirit. Through the influence of who? Let's pray. Father, thank you for what you have done so far. Now guide us and lead us into this study. In Christ's name, amen. I'm going to begin a, you know, with a sentence that is going to be part of my next sermon. I want you to listen to this. 
the kind of person you choose to date, to be engaged to, or marry is a direct reflection of your spiritual level at the time you made that choice. Let me repeat that once again, Holy Spirit. You, okay, you got, got you. Whoever you decide to be in a relationship with, via dating, courtship, engagement, marriage, is a direct reflection of your spiritual level at the time you make that choice. But that's going to be part of my next sermon. Now, again, let's go back to the book of Philippians. Philippians is all in the eons. My Bible you know, students know what I'm talking about. The eons, you start with First and Second Corinthians, right? And then you continue with your eons, right? All right. Philippians 4, verse 13. We're going to read verse 13 and 19. Now, the, the, you see, Pathfinders, listen. You're, you're growing up, right? You're growing. There is not an adult sitting here or watching online who at some point in their life has not been frustrated with themselves or are frustrated with themselves right now. What you have done, what you have said, what you, what, what you did, to the point of almost destruction. You see, it is extremely unsettling to discover that you cannot manage yourself. It's unsettling. It is actually discouraging. It is frustrating because if you cannot manage yourself, what are you going to do? And the Bible understands this, and the Bible knows this. It, you see, in Genesis chapter 3, sin entered the world. And the capacity of a human being to be balanced, to be consistent, to be faithful, to be reliable, to be even tempered, was lost in Genesis chapter 3. Now we know that because in the second generation, one brother kill his brother. Cain had a choleric fit on his probably phlegmatic brother, Abel. And in a fit of rage, uncontrollable rage, just one generation after sin, and already a human being cannot balance their quadrants. Cannot reach inside themselves and find the part of their brain that will not allow the negative part of the brain to rule them. And every person sitting here right now or watching online today who is an adult, a knowledgeable adult, had moments even this week when the worst part of you took control. Come on and say amen. You lost it. You know, I love you. So the Bible, understanding this disease, gives us, in the book of Philippians, two statements of hope. The first one is Brother Luis's favorite text. Read it with me. Philippians 4.13 says what? I can. No, no, wait, wait, wait. You're going too fast. I can. Just stop right there. I can, say it, I can do all things through Christ who does what? You see, you know, Brother Luis loved this text. So the Bible says, don't be intimidated by self. You can hold your tongue. You can experience peace. You can make good decisions. You can, you can. Stop being an emotional wimp. 
you can. Amen? And Pathfinders, this is good for you because I'm teaching what you got to look for. You see, you, you, you have lived by your pledge. You have to live by your pledge and your law. But it is going to make, it, it, it is going to take more of you than what you already want to give. And the price is going to be higher than what you're willing to pay. Go down to Philippians 4 and verse 19. You know, God is a genius. Watch. It says, And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in the glory of what? Christ Jesus. So in the moment when, 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 when your negative self wants to rise up, the Bible assures you that God can supply all your needs. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Now, these are simple texts that we like to actually quote and use, but, but we want to apply them today to the struggle with self and temperament or personality. Now remember, we are actually learning about being led by the Spirit because you are your worst enemy. Now, let's review what we have actually learned so far in the sermons that we had. Number one, we know and we have learned that the gift of the Holy, Holy Spirit is a result of a promise of Jesus to the church. Jesus says, I'm going to leave you with a comforter, but I got to go. Why, Jesus? Because I cannot be everywhere at once. The Holy Spirit can, but I cannot. In flesh and bone, Jesus could only be in one place at a time. Amen? Amen. All right. Number two, we learned that where the Holy Ghost is, there is what? Action. Action. Number three, we learned that the first encounter with the Holy Spirit with us is through his wooing you to accept Jesus as your personal Savior. That's your first contact. Then we also learn that the Holy Spirit given at the beginning of our Christian walk will not be sufficient to take you all the way to the end. That's why there's an early rain and a latter rain. Amen? Remember my, 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 my example of the car? I filled up, you know, the, the Highlander, but guess what? One tank of gas will not last me for the years that I'm going to use that truck. I got to fill up Every week. Amen? No, every two weeks. Praise the Lord. Now, you know, we need more and more of the Holy Spirit as we what? Approach the last days. Then we also learn that the special power we need, you, 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 we need to receive, must be preceded by cleansing of self. And we're going to talk about that more today. You got to get out of the way. You have to get out of the way. You got to get off your high horse. You are in the Holy Spirit's way. Now, I need you to follow me. The spiritual law is the same as the physical law, meaning two things cannot occupy the same space at the same time. You cannot just have self and expect the Holy Spirit to come in because you are in the way. We also learned that the Holy Spirit is the empowering agent to help us receive the truth. The truth as it is in the Bible. We also learned that the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead, must be actually be honored, be thanked, you know, be thanked, be recognized, and be um, included in every aspect of our lives. When was the last time you actually prayed to the Holy Spirit? Talk to Him. Then finally, we also learn that our temperament may be a natural asset, but it can also be a deterrent, right? Or a detriment if it's not controlled by the Holy Spirit. Now we're going to actually just quickly review what we learned last week. Last week, we actually learned that our brain um, ha has how many quadrants? 
four. And it also has hemisphere. You are either a left brain or a right brain person. And the main job of the left hemisphere is cognitive activity. The main job of the right hand of the, uh, of the, he uh, the right hemisphere is, is an emotional activity. Now, that's why we say that the upper left quadrant prioritizes. The lower left quadrant does what? Come on, does what? Organizes. The right upper um, you know, quadrant visualizes. And the right lower quadrant does what? Harmonizes. Isn't God a genius? I mean, think about the kind of person you would be if all of those quadrants function in a balanced, ba balanced manner. You could prioritize when you need it. You could actually organize when you had to. You can visualize when you felt like you could, you, you could. And you can harmonize no matter what is going on around you. Just let that sink in. What kind of person you will be if all of those quadrants are in balance? That's how God put you together. By the way, it's in you right now. And we are learning that as people get older, you begin the, to, to have the ability to use more of the quadrants. That's the reason why some of you, especially, you know, those of us that are, you know, getting up there. Um, we, we actually, Mario, I'm in more than one quadrant. I knew, I know, but I didn't want to tell you. You see, one of the things that I'm noticing as I'm actually getting older Lower left, melancholic, right? And upper left, choleric, prioritizing. More and more, I'm actually moving into the upper right, visualizing. That's the reason some of you were telling me, oh, yeah, Mario, man, man, I'm, more, I'm in more quadrants than everything else. Because as you get older, as I get older, let me just include myself. I don't want to include anybody else here. As I get older, I'm getting looser. I'll say amen for what God is doing with, you know, for me. I'm getting looser. I relax more, and, and that will add more years to my life, by the way. If we could learn to use all of our quadrants. You see, some of us are so, how do I say this? Yeah, some of us are so single quadrant shackled that there are aspects of yourself that you have never enjoyed. You see, one of the best things that could happen to some of you is that you come to church on Sabbath and you lose her. You just start shouting. Why didn't you say amen? No, oh, no, Mario, I cannot say that. Mm -mm. But it will set you free. We are shackled to our temperaments. Now, we learn, now we're getting into it now. We learned that if you are upper left, you are upper left, you are a prioritizer, you are a choleric. Huh? You like to run everything. Leader, leader like. You see, somebody's confessing. And you're only comfortable, though, by you being in charge. Very inflexible. If you are a lower left, the organizer, you are a melancholic. And you organize almost to the point of, let me just talk to myself. Because, you know, you, you see, I'm trying, I'm trying to set myself free in this series through confession. You see, I'm a person that, 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 that when, 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 when it comes from, you know, when I come from a trip and I have change in my pocket, I stack my change for Gordo's piggy bank in a very peculiar way. All the quarters together, all the nickels together, all the dimes together. And, and, and I, try, I, I, I try to make myself ignore the money just laying around. But it's tough for me. Because quarters ought to be with quarters. And then you get to my closet. 
which is a little bit in disarray because this, this whole health challenge, you know, is getting me to lose weight and, and I need to get rid of some stuff. But all the blues are together. All the whites are together. All the stripes are together. And Annette just tells me, you know, just tells me, you know, I put your shirt up on top of the bed. You know what she's telling me? She's like, you go ahead and hang it. I don't know where to. You know why she does that? Because it's ridiculous. And the problem is that I know that it is ridiculous. But I cannot seem to find peace. Pray for the pastor. I need to be set free. The other day, confessing, the other day I hung a blue shirt among my whites. In the middle of a meeting, I said, stop, stop, hold up. Put it in mute, went upstairs, took that blue shirt, and hung it with the blues. It tore me up. I could not do it. All I'm asking God is to give me freedom in the last days. Now, 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 the, the, the sanguine, the sanguine, the upper right, these people, this, these are the people who simply want any inhibitions. They don't want any inhibitions at all. Sociable. The, their closet is an absolute nightmare. I'm sorry, that was just mental, right? But it's not a nightmare for them. You see, I don't care if they cannot find anything in the closet, but they are more fun, loving people. They're pleasant. They're looser. Right? Life would be a bore if these people were not among us. You see, these are the people that drive on 270 with their blinker on and they're not turning anywhere. I, I just, I just, I just, can I just confess? And you're trying to figure out which way am I going to pass there, right or left? And when you finally pass these brothers or sisters, they're just, they're just having a good old time. Your blinker is on. Fun loving people. And then, then you got the low right phlegmatic. Peaceful, calm. Nothing disturbs, no, nothing disturbs her. Nothing, nothing. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you being disturbed does not disturb them. You're having a heart attack around them. They will look at you and say, you better get that strength. You better get that together. <laughs> we don't have time for this right now. Chill. Now, now, Pathfinders, listen to me. These are the four quadrants. And these four quadrants are all expressions of a mighty God. That's why you cannot belittle any of the quadrants because the Bible says that we were made how? In the image of God, in his likeness. God is a choleric, God is a melancholic, God is a sanguine, God is a phlegmatic. Nobody can be cool like God can be cool when he wants to be cool. Amen. Amen. Nobody can start Joy like God can start joy. Nobody can be, more, can be more prioritized than God. And he has made your salvation his priority. Thank you, Father. And no one can be more organized than God. I mean, just study the sanctuary service. That can only come out of, a, out of the mind of an organized God. So what I'm trying to tell you is this. <laughs> Pathfinders, listen, these are all reflections of God, all these quadrants. So we don't put any of them down, or we don't put any of them up either. So now, let's get into the message real quick here. I'm hungry. Now, look at the choleric. And those of you watching, you can literally download, uh, you know, this actual sheet out of our website, if you go to our website and you click on the watch live, there is on the right hand, there's a PDF button. You click on that and you can download this sheet for yourself. Those of you who go home, go there. You see the beauty is that Daryl sets up the whole thing beforehand. And guess what? All I did was load the document there. It's already set. Daryl didn't know it. I just did it. So, now, 
Again, that is the, by the way, that is the best way to actually be interactive with us. You can put prayer requests there. You can do all kinds of stuff there. Now, look, when you look at the choleric, right? The choleric has many positive aspects. But remember, Pathfinders, we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Huh? It, it, you know, it, so the choleric, at its worst, can have a little need for friends. They can be very opinionated. It means their approach towards the Bible can be extremely arrogant, overconfident. They may not feel the need to lean on God, impetuous or impulsive. They cannot relax. So finding peace in Christ is a challenge for a choleric. Workaholics, because they don't like failure. So finding time to worship is a challenge for a choleric. Expects complete devotion or loyalty. That means that they, cannot, they can be a little bit of a self-centered person. Keep looking straight. They can never say that they're sorry. Well, Pathfinders, it's good that you're actually listening to this because, because as you grow older, you are going to, 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 to see some of these tendencies in yourself. And because, because how can you be forgiven? Listen, how can you be forgiven if you don't say sorry? And who is going to go to heaven who has not been forgiven? They observe, they, they assume authority. Any and God wants to be on the throne, but the choleric wants to be in authority. Unemotional or tactless, um, cruel, arrogant, manipulative, fear, loss of control. So when the choleric person is not listening to the Holy Spirit, you can see how difficult they can be to be saved. And you see that? No, 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 I'm not, I'm not stopping there. No, no, because I'm a choleric melancholic. So let's go with the melancholic side. Easily depressed. But Christianity is a joy. Na uh, uh, naively idealistic. That means that they have expectations that can never be fulfilled. Thrift to extremes. That means that they may not be uh, generous in, in, in giving when the Lord calls them and needs them to be. They're not good under pressure. They fall apart. That's not me. Mm -mm. They, this is me. They can be perfectionist. That means that, that they are very demanding of other people. They need time in doing things. Folks, understand that even though you, you lean towards a quadrant, it varies, right? They are difficult to please. Very critical. I, I, and if you're married to a melancholic, I'm praying for you. <laughs> Self-centered. Uh, melancholics spend too much time thinking about how they look. Pessimistic. The melancholic never sees the sun, but they all, they, they, they all see the clouds approaching. Moody. You don't know what person you're going to get when you, end, when you get home. <laughs> Revengeful. Don't mess with the melancholic. You better wash your back. You see, all of you are laughing. But you can see how hard these people are to save. Now, it is if the melancholic does not let the Holy Spirit drive their lives, it can be devastating. But each quadrant has a strength and weaknesses. It is a balancing act. Because every day, Pathfinder, listen, every day you are being pulled back and forth between the two sides of yourself. 
Now, they're sanguine. Oh. They're motivated by emotions. They don't always think things through. They're impulsive. Poof. Oh, by the way, they don't like schedules. They dislike schedules. They love the text that says, no man knows the day or the hour. <laughs> Hard to say no. Huh? They allow people to use them all the time. They make excuses. Now, making excuses, my finder, since, since you are a, in, a, in, a, in a leadership you know, program, making excuses is a form of arrogance. Because they never really take responsibility. Weak will. They get bored easily. Church is a challenge for the sanguine. They lose track of time. The sanguine is the person that tells you, give me five minutes. Knowing the sanguine, I know you're going to be there 20 minutes late. And then, then, think about it. Then they have the guts to get an attitude if you tell them that they're late. They take on too much, easily distracted. Now, they are challenged at the time of worship. You see, Pathfinders, I, I, I am talking to you because everybody else is ignoring me right now that is an adult, all right? So, you know, right now, just pay attention because you, you're, getting, you're getting now to this level. You're growing in Christ. You see, growing in Christ means that you have to have a private, quiet, unbothered time with the Lord every single day. But the sanguine gets bored easily. Can lack focus because they, they, are, they are easily distracted? Restless. Huh? They talk too much. If you're married or going out with a sanguine, you got to be very patient. Because they are very descriptive. They will tell you not only what happened, but they will tell you the expressions on their faces, how they were waving their finger. And, and, and all you're doing is actually just sitting there patiently saying, when is, when is, when are they going to end? Because you see, how this person, you, you see how this person will be a challenge for the Holy Spirit? So the sanguine has to give that part of themselves to the Holy Spirit. All phlegmatic, stubborn, uninvolved, procrastinates, unenthusiastic, hard to get moving, too peaceful. And, and Pathfinders, let me tell you, you have to, you, you, you have to, you, you got to get, you got to get a get me up sometimes. Something has to motivate you. Careless. Lacks follow through. They dislike changes. And also the melancholic hates conflict. Now that one is the key. They hate conflict. And that's the key because when you are talking about the Christian life, it, it, it says to us in 1 Timothy 6.12 that fight the good fight of faith. But the phlegmatic don't like to fight. They don't like to struggle. Well, you see, Pathfinders, listen to me. You will not walk on the streets of gold without a struggle. You got to take on yourself. The phlegmatic seeks to avoid the struggle. They can actually be very lazy, indecisive. When the essence of Christianity is making a decision and sticking with that decision, they can be at ease. You see, there's no phlegmatic or sanguine or melancholic or choleric that has all these negatives. Are you with me? Now, here we go. I read to you 
their spiritual things to the Godemus. But before Jesus got there, he got an encounter that we looked at in John 2, verse 24 and 25. I want you to stay with me. We, we, we're, we're, we're not going this long. We're not going to go long. I, I want you to stay with me. I'm going to repeat this again. We read it last week. It, you know, and folks, let me be clear about this. I want to be saved. I want to be in the kingdom of heaven, and I want all of you to be there too. But salvation does not, doesn't just happen because you are a nice person. Are you with me? You got to take, you, you got to take self on. And the passage that we are about to read, we read it last week. And I'm just going to read it again without apology because it gives you some assurance. John 2, verse 24 and 25. And again, listen to what Jesus said. Read, it says this. But Jesus did not commit himself to them because why? He knew all men. You got that? You got that? Look at verse 25. It says, and had no need that anyone should do what? Testify of man, for he what? Knew what was in man. I love that. That means that when I get on my knees and go to the Lord, I'm talking to a God who knows what is in me. Come on, folks. He's the only one that knows what's in me. In fact, <laughs> he knows more about me than I know about me. So I am talking to the best psychotherapist that you can find. And he doesn't have to ask me a bunch of silly questions. No, 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 no. He knows when I come what I am actually bringing to him. Thank God that there's at least one person that, can, that I can actually do that with. And he is a person who can be trusted. So through the Holy Spirit, God understands me. But our problem is, and we said that, you know, we said that Paul described this problem, Romans. Romans 7. Romans 7. Paul describes this dilemma that you and I face. Romans 7. Yeah. Now, you're going to have it in front of you in your Bibles, right? But I'm going to read it to you from the Message Bible. All right? So I'm going to read it to you in another way. But please, please follow me with your own Bibles. Romans 7, 17. And we're going to go all the way to verse 21. Now I'm going to read it from the Message Bible. It's kind of straight. I, 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 it kind of tells you what really needs to be happening here. Right? Here's the Message Bible. Romans 7. Right? And again, read it for yourself. Romans 7. And this is what it says, 17. For if I, just read the first word right there. For if I know the law, but still cannot keep it, and if the power of sin within me keeps sabotaging my best intentions, I obviously need help. <laughs> remember, remember that other column? The one on the right? You see, all of you, like to read the strengths. You don't like the weaknesses. The negative column, that's the sabotage that rises up in a moment of pressure. You see, the melancholic knows that he or she ought to be one way, but if he or she is tired and maybe did not eat right or maybe took too much of of, uh, uh, you know, the heavy blood from eating stuff that sh they should not be eating, then he or she might yield to their worst side. Verse 18, I realize that I don't have what it takes. I can will it, but I can do it. You hear Paul saying this? Somewhat have to say amen right now. I will it. Hey, I want to do it. I can't. 
I decide to do good, but I don't really do it. If I decide not to do bad, but then I do it anyways. Is Paul talking to us today? Verse 20. My decisions, such as they are, don't result in actions. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I'm telling you, Paul is testifying right now. Have you been there? Have you been there? So the Bible understands you. And this passage was inspired by whom? The Holy Spirit. So the person who is going to help you be victorious inspire Paul to look right down inside your head and describe what you're going through. Keep reading. Something has gone wrong deep within me and gets the better of me every time. And we have to look at what it says here, folks. This verse says, deep within me. It is talking about your cerebral cortex. We are talking about these two upper, upper lobes, the choleric and the sanguine, that are brighter, they're the brighter sides. And we are also talking about these lower lobes behind the upper lobe, the, dark, the darker lobes, melancholic, phlegmatic, the ones that tend to go towards moodiness. You see, we're talking about the fact that there is something deep down inside of you, DNA, something deep down inside of you, may, 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 may you have been maybe sexually abused when you were growing up, Something inside of you, maybe you were not loved as you were supposed to be loved. Something inside of you that, 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 that is a cancer. It's a cancer. And I thank God today that somebody really understands. Verse 21, it happens so regularly that it is predictable. The moment that I decide to do good, sin is there to trip me up. I truly delight in God's commands. Verse 22. But it is pretty obvious that I, not all of me joins uh, in that delight. Parts of me covertly rebel. And just when I at least expect it, they take charge. Now, folks, I'm telling you, and I hope that you're enjoying this version in the Message Bible. Look at verse 24. I tried everything and nothing helps. I am at the end of my rope. Have you been there? Is there no one who can do anything for me? Isn't that the real question? The answer Thank God is that Jesus Christ can and does. You ought to be saying amen right now. Amen. Jesus Christ can and does. First of all, Jesus came and died for you. Pathfinders, just like you are. Aren't you glad that God did not require the human race to be perfect before he put his son on the cross? Aren't you thankful for that? I mean, imagine, what, what hope will we all have? What if Jesus would have said, hey, as soon as you get yourself straight, I'll die for you. But instead, one of my favorite texts in Romans 5, 8, huh, says all of that, Pathfinders, it says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't wait. He knew that the fixing we needed couldn't be fixed without help. And that's why some of you are very unwise when we make the appeals. You sit there saying to yourself, as soon as, as, soon as I get myself straight, I'm going to go down. That means that you will never do it. You come to Christ. He applies the help. You cannot bargain with the Lord. You have an empty wallet.
you know, Romans 7, 21, hey, hey, he acted to set things right on the life of contradictions where I want to serve God with all my heart and mind, but I am pulled by the influence of sin to do something totally different. You know, I don't, I don't know how you feel after reading something like that, but I know that I need, I need the help of the Holy Spirit. And the question that we want to deal with after, after we realize that we need him is, how does he work? How does the Holy Spirit work? 1 Corinthians 15.31. Okay? Listen to how he, how he works. It says this. 1 Corinthians 15.31. Yeah, I'm there. You're actually taking too long. I'm just going to read. It says this. I affirm... By the boasting in you, which I have in Christ, Jesus our Lord, I die, I die. Now, I want to remind you of something I mentioned last week, and I need you to remember this, because friends, this is a serious message. Because Pathfinders, since last week, we have been saying that you are your worst enemy. And we're talking about how you over, overcome self. And that is worse than overcoming cigarettes, overcoming liquor. We are talking about something that you are naturally, and by distortions of DNA and other influences, you develop the tendency to play to your bad side. This is serious. You see, the cigarettes are outside, and they come inside. But you were born this way. So, I die daily. Now, what I'm going to say next, just a simple phrase your pastor says all the time. But I, 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 either you're going to do it, or you're not going to do it. So, Pathfinders, listen to me. You have to begin every day with self-destruction. And Pathfinders, if you really want to be successful in this thing called life, I must suggest to you that the most dangerous thing that you can do is get up and go to school without prayer. It's, as, it's, it's not only that, it's suicidal. You got to take on yourself to the Lord in the morning. Because before the day is over, the devil also understands this whole brain thinking. He knows your bad side. Doesn't he not? So if I don't get help right away in my morning prayer, I'm already defeated before the day begins. So for the Holy Spirit to work in your life, Pathfinders, you have to start with dying of self, daily in prayer. But that's not all. Galatians 5.19. Galatians 5. <laughs> Galatians 5. Oh, my goodness. Galatians 5, right there. Yes. And this passage speaks to every single one of us. Yeah. This is, this is, it speaks to the right of the issue. So if I was you, I will circle, highlight this passage. Galatians 5, verse 19. You ready? Read with me. Now the works of the flesh. Stop, 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 stop. I told you the other day, that word flesh, F-L-E-S-H, take the H out. Read it backwards. It says what? Self. The age is always silent for us Hispanics. So, it says, the works of the what? Flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, come on, read, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, 
contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is rough. The works of self. Verse 21, we're not done. Envy, murders, drunkenness, reveries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Now, that list describes us. And he says, if you do these things, what's going to happen? You're not going to make it. Verse 22 starts with a but. But the fruit of the Spirit. Wait, 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 wait. The fruit of who? The Spirit. So when the Spirit comes, He brings more than just guilt and conviction. He brings help. You see, I don't need God just telling me what I'm, do what, what I, what I'm doing wrong. I know what I'm doing wrong. I just need help. So the Spirit brings something. What does He bring? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Now notice how these tra uh, traits cut across every single quadrant. For the melancholic, love, joy, and peace. For the choleric, love, joy, and peace. For the sanguine, love, joy, and peace. For the phlegmatic, love, joy, and peace. And all the rest is an antidote. The fruit of the Spirit. And you find these characteristics all through the life of of Christ. So when we really need pathfinders, what we really need is the spirit to come in and take full control of us. You see, love contradicts hate. Joy contradicts sadness, depression, and complaining. Peace contradicts the worry, the inner turmoil. The long suffering contradicts impatience and intolerance the gentleness contradicts the harshness indifference revengeful spirit the goodness contradicts selfishness and self-centeredness the faith contradicts doubt the fear the anxiety the meekness contradicts the prideful and self-seeking self-control the self-control the self-control contradicts rage Anger, jealousy. See, one temperament might be more prone to the other in some of these areas. But there's no temperament. There's no personality trait that can withstand the influence of these traits if we let the spirit take control. Now we go back where we started. Now you can say when you do that, you can really say, I can do all. I can do all. But you got to take yourself on. Every single one of us know that we need to do this. Try some things. Decide this week that no matter how upset you get, you're not going to say a word. Oh, Lord, nobody liked that one. Just try it for one week. Now, that would be a real victory for me. You see, I come from the temperament that, 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 that it feels that, that I, I have to say something. Because I feel like people may be getting by if I don't say something and let them escape. So let's make a commitment next week that you're not going to say a word. Now, friends, this is going to be a Mount Everest for me. Because how many of you know that the devil sneaks through the back door. How many of you know that? You may get to Wednesday. Everything is going smooth. Huh? 
You say, hey, I'm at peace. But the devil has plans for me on Thursday. And you have to start even, even when you're by yourself. Because my worst moments for me is in the car. And the devil knows that I cannot deal with bad driving. I say things in the car that I should not say or think. Where did you learn to drive? Huh? Did you get your, your, did you get your license as a gift? Did you get your license in a Cracker Jack box? Use the pedal on the right not the one on the left. Hello? You see, when I'm in the car by myself, I'm an idiot. Hey, hey, Grace, sit in the light, buddy. Anytime, I mean, you put the signal light 100 miles away. Now, you can laugh, but you know you've been there. Don't sit there laughing at me. You've been there. Your blinker is on, and you, you actually put your window the hell out. Your, win your blinker. So this week, I'm going to tell myself not to say a word. Hmm? How, how many of you are going to pray for me? Thank you. I appreciate that. You better pray for, you better, no, no, no. But you also got to pray for yourself. Folks, Pathfinders, li listen to what I'm saying. Because either the sermon is going to be applied or it's a wasted 40 minutes. You either are going to try or you're just going to just shut. But you start by keeping your mouth shut one week. No matter how upset, I'm not going to say a word. And next week, you're going to come to church and sing a victory song. Now, I guarantee you, and if you make this pledge with me, oh, you got a week coming. I can guarantee you that. Let's do this, folks. This side, this week, you know, this side, this week, will not leave their home without praying. This side, this week, you're going to read the Bible every day. Because either you're going to apply the sermon or this is just a waste of time. Something has to change. We cannot keep on the way that we are. It doesn't matter how old you are. Let, let's, let's read this statement, last statement from my favorite book. This book is hitting me upside my head. The Coming of the Comforter, page 174. Last read, here we go. To, you, you, you're reading with me. Just, just look at here. To be filled. To be what? Filled. In both first being what? Uh-oh. Self and sin are thus displays. It is the operation. It is the, excuse me, the operation of the law of exclusion. There is room for various things in the tumbler. But if filled with water, there is no room for the air that had previously filled it. Now I want you to read the next one. Two diverse things cannot at one and the same time occupy the same place. Self and the Holy Spirit cannot occupy the same heart throne. Remember, we're, we're talking about you are your worst enemy. But it gets better. Continue. I cannot still be something and God be everything. And self can never cast out self. Hold on, hold on. Self can never cast out self. Don't attempt to make room Simply yield. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You're not getting it. Simply do what? Yield. And the Lord will come suddenly to his temple. 
In each heart, there is a cross and throne. If Jesus is on the throne, self is on the cross. Every day, Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Folks, this is it. You got to get yourself out of the way. You see, I was going, I, I can just imagine the day of Pentecost. Because remember, I started the sermon saying that the spiritual law is equal to that physical law. You see, wind always blows, and we see this in this hurricane. Wind always blows in the direction of a vacuum. And I find it interesting in Acts chapter 2, when it describes the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, it says that, that there was a sound of a mighty rushing wind. Where was it going? It was going to fill 120 empty hearts that had just emptied themselves from self. They had tarried, they had, they had cleansed themselves of all the garbage of the quadrants. And now the Holy Spirit came and filled those lives. Folks, we need to become vacuums. Because the wind cannot fill you unless you do. Unless you do that, the Holy Spirit cannot come in. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I think we get it. We can try to say it so many different ways, but at some point, somebody here and at home has to decide to take self on. To get out of the blaming game. Maybe someone here or watching has gotten honest with themselves. We can look at charts, graphs, May even try, maybe even try, uh, you know, better understand what is wrong with us. And maybe that happened for somebody today. But the bottom line is, we have to take self on. Teach our pathfinders to take self on. There is not a person here who does not know the areas of life where they fail consistently. We know and we know why in many cases. But right now, we really need to have a one-on-one -on -one with Jesus. Because all Jesus wants to do is help us. So right now, with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, I'm going to make this a very simple appeal. Who needs to get rid of self? right now. Stand to your feet. If you don't need to, that's okay. This is not a general appeal. I need to get rid of self. If you're good with God, that's fine. No problem. But you know, you know that you need to get rid of self. Fathers, you see us standing. And we're standing because it's a demonstration letting you know that we are sorry for being in the way. But today, we just want to yield. We want to create space so the Holy Spirit may come into our lives and control our bad side. Father, right now, we're standing because, Lord, 
Self has to get out. We got to get rid of it. So Lord, I'm asking you right now, Father, just like you visited with me this, this week, I'm asking you, Holy Spirit, that you visit with everyone represented here, everyone watching, that you go visit with us in our homes, in our rooms, that you really, really have a one-on-one -on -one with each and every single one of us. Self will not take control of us anymore. So we want to give self to you. Yeah, there's some changes that need to take place. But we're giving you permission to do so. So whatever it is, Lord, that you want to do and you want us to do, we ask, Father, that you, that you take it. Take it. And Lord, one side promise already. We're going to pray before we get out of the door. The other side is going to read the Bible every day. Every day. Every day. So, Father, thank you. Thank you for the Pathfinders. Thank you for the ministry that you have given Terry and my wife. Bless all of those that are dealing with our children. May your Holy Spirit also fill them up. So when, when our young people look at them, they can see someone completely and absolutely controlled by the Holy Spirit. Guide us, O oh Lord. Lead us, O oh Lord. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated.